What is good everyone, I am BA and I'm back with a little movie review this week. So, I see a lot of things being said about The Matrix Resurrections just now. Some good, some bad. Uh, by the way, before I start this, I want to say I haven't like wikipedia it. I don't even know all the actors' names. All you need to know is, I was a huge fan of Matrix 1. I thought Matrix 2 was okay thanks to the fights, but there was a lot of boring scenes and poorly, woodenly acted scenes. And I thought The Matrix 3 was a complete letdown because it maintained the wooden acted boring scenes from the second one while dumbing down the martial arts and uh, action sequences. I just thought it was shit. So for the people out there that think this new film somehow sullies the Matrix trilogy, like the Matrix trilogy sullied itself back in the day and that's the general perception of it so don't rose tint your glasses and act like that wasn't how it was seen at the time. The effects were seen as groundbreaking at the time but now when you watch Neo versus all those Agent Smiths in the second one it seems very rubbery and unenjoyable now when I watch it. I also want to say, people more and more nowadays put their political alignments into their opinions on art. And I know what these people will say, well that's because the people making the art are putting their political opinions in there, I get it, I get it. And I hate shit like that. When you can tell that things are shoehorned into shows and movies just to fit some fucking political agenda of any kind. Where do I stand on it? Sometimes I like a giant powerful lady to kick down a wall and smash someone's head off with a warhammer. Sometimes I like a little fast nimble lady that has to use her wits and cunning to outwit the stronger men. Sometimes I like a lady that fucking needs help because sometimes we all need help. And these are the examples that I could say the exact same for male counterparts of. You know the only thing I don't like is when any of these characters are shoehorned into a story just to fit a political agenda or hit a key demographic. As long as any of these characters occur naturally throughout a story, I love them. Perfect example is Brienne of Torf, tank female, like but she's not shoehorned into Game of Thrones to fit some yay women or strong agenda. She's just a big woman in a medieval world that learned to fight like a f like the fucking dudes to hang because of her size. So I love all sorts of characters and shit. And the one thing I will say on putting your political opinions into movies and TV is like I always try and take one step back and think what would the universe think of it all? And trust me, the universe would think we are all dumb as fuck. So no matter whether you're left or right or Greenpeace or whatever the fuck you think you are, just keep those opinions out of movies because I see a lot of negative critique towards this new Matrix because yes, Larry is now Lena or whatever one of the two of them it is, you know, she's transitioned to female and Lena Wachowski wrote this script and straight away that makes people jump on, to be honest, the small amount of times within it where things that could be classified as current, you know, left wing or SJW politics are even mentioned, like the psychiatrist said the says the word triggered twice. I instantly associate that with like modern left wing, sometimes extremist views. And there's a few other things like that dotted throughout it, but nothing where I would like sit back and go, this is unenjoyable because Lena Wachowski's clearly just putting all her, you know, left wing shit throughout it. I didn't see that in it at all. What I did see in it though, is why I think it's decent. Here's what I saw in it. Before this film happened, Lena Wachowski was sat down and told that if she didn't help make the next Matrix, the studio were going to make it without her. So she managed to take that and somehow vent that frustration in the movie. Because in the movie, Neo is being pressured to make a new Matrix, whether he wants involvement or not. So she is literally venting her real life frustration on her own franchise, within the franchise, while making it a coherent story that, re that tells another chapter in the Matrix. And yeah, it's really left field and weird, but just because she's shoehorning in some left wing shit, don't hate on it if you're right wing or whatever, like I'm no wing, but still I, I appreciate the fact that she took this personal grievance and literally made it the, the beginning point of the film. That literally got me interested, a lot of people say it's too meta, I say that is like the ultimate meta. It's like, it's her series, she wants control of it, if they're saying they're gonna make another one without her, she's like, fuck it. And you know what, I'm putting that in the script because I get creative control over my shit if I'm doing it. And she managed to shoehorn that in. Also, obviously, Lena Wachowski clearly ha hates her psychiatrist in real life because guess who turns out to be the fucking bad guy, which is funny. But again, fuck politics. I'm just looking at it clearly from a point of view of like, did I enjoy it or not? And when I watched it, I was watching the first hour, say, 
And I was like, this is actually interesting. It could have just been like, oh, uh, Matrix number eight has started because I believe Neo was the seventh version of himself in the Matrix. So they could have just like rebooted, like, act, okay, the machines have rebooted the Matrix and the one is being born again. And that's the crux of the new trilogy, which is essentially what you would call a soft reboot. And we'd retread many of the steps that the original trilogy has already went through. Do you really want to see that? I mean, if it's done well, it would still be good, but I'd much rather see some weird fresh shit. I love fresh, creative, original, unique ideas, and one thing you cannot say about the, the beginning point of this Matrix movie is that, is that it is not fresh or original. How many people genuinely get to vent the way they feel about their bosses in a film? It's so hilarious. Um, and uh, that guy turns out to be Agent Smith, so the two villains are uh, the psychiatrist and the guy pressuring Neo to make a new movie. That is not a coincidence. Now, here's the sad truth, though. Is it Young Wu Ping, I forget the name of the guy, but the guy that choreographed the original Matrix trilogy is an absolute legend, did Iron Monkey, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, legendary kung fu fight choreographer that is a large part to the success of the original Matrix trilogy due to the fights that he choreographed. They didn't rehire him for this fourth one, and I understand their stance on like bullet times played out now, we can't keep doing bullet time fights, but no matter way you cut this cake, the fight scenes are shit, right? Now, they are fucking shit. And what's a shame is that's like the one thing I was going into this film thinking, well, at least the fights will be good because it's Matrix. They're shit. Like, some of the choreography is literally so poor that the, it could have been done just before the take happened. Like, right, you're going to punch him twice in the chest, he blocks the third one and you punch him in the stomach and then we cut to the next shot. Action. That's how shit some of these fights were. Now, Keanu Reeves is getting old and he's slowing down, but the fact that Neo, the one, only has one fight scene, which is, by the way, a poor recreation of the original dojo fight with Morpheus. Aside from that, he just does his uh, magic hands thing. Every single fight, Neo's palms have the answer to all his troubles. Keanu Reeves can still do choreographed fight shit. I mean, I guarantee John Wick 4 has fast fluid fight choreography mixing between guns and unarmed combat, which is exactly what fucking Neo did in the original. There is so many dope fight choreographers as well, why not hire the Raid guys? Why not hire the John Wick guys? These are the guys bringing the field forward. Instead, Lena Wachowski decided to do the fights her own way, but I've got to say she body bagged it because of it. And at first I thought, well that's ass. And also, I didn't enjoy the story so much the second half of the film. So, with that, you're saying, well, why are you saying it's decent? You thought the first half was interesting, but then all the fights were shit and the story trailed off. Why is it decent? Here's why. Because there seems to be no feasible explanation for any of this, other than the fact that Lena Wachowski literally wanted to grab the bull by its horns and then smash it into a brick wall so nobody else could ever chase it again. The fact that she made such a point to give her reason for making it and implemented her reason for making it as part of the plot shows where her mind was at while making this film. So it wouldn't surprise me if she was literally like, fuck it, if these people want to pressure me into making another Matrix and say they're going to make one without me, I will make one last one and make the fight so shit and the story so weird that there's literally nowhere they can take it from there that has any sort of marketability or profit to be made and they leave me and my fucking beloved film franchise, which is a staple of pop culture history that, I, that she was involved in, which is a dope thing. Long after Lena Wachowski dies, people will remember the Matrix. That will be their legacy. And the fact that this studio wanted to just tear that away from her and make a film without any, either of their involvement is fucking disgraceful. No matter where you lie on any of this political bullshit, that is fucked up. Imagine if that was your life's work, the one thing you would be remembered for. Imagine if you wrote a book and then the company just said, we're writing a sequel. And if you don't write the sequel, we're going to make it any way we want. You would be heartbroken. So to me, this film is almost like a, a harakiri. This is a seppuku. This is self-sacrifice. It's a body bagging of the thing they created. Sometimes you have to kill what you love. And I believe Lena Wachowski done it. There is no way these fight scenes were that whacked by coincidence. There is no way. These fight scenes were so fucking dead. I cannot stress how dead they were. But this film will always be decent to me now. Because it's like a little time capsule 
of the movie industry pressing against someone and this being a representation of their mind state under that stress. There's not many examples of that. You could literally point to a film and be like, well, that's an example of this person going through this shit. This film is literally an example of Lana Wachowski being pressured into doing this shit by a studio and her going, all right, you want a Matrix sequel? Cool, cool. Hope you like flamboyant Morpheus, bitch. Hope you like dead fights, bitch. Hope you like the psychiatrist being the fucking bad guy with weird blue rimmed glasses, bitch. Neil Patrick Harris is going to play him, bitch. <laughs> Surely. And even if that isn't the legitimate reason for any of this, I will always now look at this film as if that is the case. And for that reason, and for the first hour, which to me was legitimately interesting because of its freshness, The Matrix is decent. Now, I appreciate if you've drawn your line in the sand one way or the other in this, I know we all love Keanu, I know, but he makes shit films too. Regardless, check it out for yourself and see what you think, and even if this one is dead, don't forget it didn't do nothing that The Matrix 3 didn't already do and The Matrix 2 was beginning to do, which is take away from the one real classic in all of this, The Matrix. Don't forget how legendary it was, I watched it last year again actually and just see even the tempo and the pacing and the way they build up momentum and tension and pay it off in the third act, it's just a brilliantly made film, a brilliantly written script which has perfect pacing. Uh, none of the Matrix sequels had uh, they all had weird fucking pace in all the sequels. The first one is the only real classic in my eyes. Everything else is just like stocking filler. The Matrix is what's under the fucking tree. And we must never forget that and always appreciate how legendary it is. If you've liked this video, click like. Subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more videos like this. And ring the bell if you would like to be notified as to when they are dropping. If there's anything you want to discuss regarding my opinions on this Matrix sequel or anything you want to see me review in the future, comment down below and share this video around to anybody you think might appreciate or want to listen to my opinion on it. My Patreon link is in the description. If you become a Patreon, you get access to polls and posts that are exclusive to that site. You get access to these videos I post on YouTube weeks and weeks in advance. And you also get access to full-length versions of all the videos I react to on YouTube. So check them all out on my YouTube and and if you want to become a patron, you can see the full length versions up there. So consider that, the link is in the description, it helps me and the channel out so much. And until next time, I have been BA, peace.